Hi everyone. Uh, in, in this session, we will have uh, some review questions about solving linear and nonlinear equations, one variable and multi multi variables. So we'll start with the first question here, where we have here uh, a set of linear equations, but it is in the matrix form. We are asked to use the Gauss cycle, so we identify the technique that we need to use. And we are given the initial conditions and we are requested to do only one iteration. So these are the three most important components. Nothing about how many significant digits do I have to use, then I can use any number of significant digits. Okay, so the first thing now I need to do here is basically write the three equations. Okay, so we'll have the first equation is 5x0 plus 2x1 minus x2 equal to 2. The second equation is 3x0 plus 7x1 plus 3x2 equal to minus 1. And then finally, the last equation, which is x0 minus 4x1 plus 6x2 equal to 1. So these are the three equations derived from basically this system of linear equations from the matrix format. Then I will go for the second step, which is basically moving the one variable at a time at one side and move the rest of the equations to the other side. So here in from equation number one, the first equation, you will have x zero equal to one over five, and then minus two x one plus x two plus two. And then equation number two, we will have x one equal to 1 over 7 minus 3x0 minus 3x2 minus 1. And finally, from the third and the last equation, you will have x2 equal to 1 over 6 minus x0 plus 4x1 plus 1. Now we have here the three equations written in that format. Now I will start my iteration, which is our third step. So we will start basically with x0. So x0 is equal to 1 over 5 minus 2 times 0. Now I have the only values I have for x0, x1, and x2 is the initial guess. So I have to use all of these values. This is because this is the only values I have plus 0, plus 2, this is give me 2 over 5, or 0.4. Now we'll go for x1, which is equal to 1 over 7, minus 3 times x0. Now x0, I have two values. I have the initial guess, and I have the 0.4. Here I will use the most updated value, which is the 0.4. Minus 3 times x2, I have only one value, which is 0 for x2, minus 1. And this will give me minus 0.31. Finally, my x2 is equal to 1 over 6, minus x0, minus 0.4, plus 4 times x1, which is given to me, minus 0.31, the most updated values, plus 1. And this will give me minus 0.11. So this is using the first iteration. Our intention here is not to go for conversions. Done. My problem is basically solved. Let's go for the second question. It says here, using both Gauss-Seidel and Newton-Raphson methods with an initial condition equal to t equal to 1, we use two iterations, find the roots of this nonlinear equation. So again, I will start with basically the Gauss-Seidel, with the GS method here. Again, this is the equation. Now I need to put it in the form of t equal to, so I will e rewrite the equation as such, t equal to e minus t cosine t plus t. So I add t to both sides. So now I have it in the right, in the right format. Now my t0 is equal to 0. This is my initial condition. Now I need to find my t1. T1 basically will be equal to e to the power of minus 0 cosine of 0 plus 0. Now we have to make sure now here this t as a variable has to be in radian, not in degrees. So make sure that when you set your calculator, you have this as, as radian. 
and this is basically is equal to two one. So this is the initial guess. This is the first iteration. Now we go for the second iteration. T two is equal to e to the power of minus one. This is the value of t now. Cosine of one plus one, and this will give you one point one point two. So that is basically using the Gauss Seidel method. Now let's go to use the Newton Raphson method. Now in the Newton Raphson method, the t would equal to p zero minus the p of t zero divided by b derivative of t zero. That is how you will find the. So this is t less t one is equal to t at the initial conditions, b of t zero at the derivative. So the b of t is equal to e minus t cosine of t. The derivative of t is equal to okay minus e minus t cosine of t minus e minus t sine of t. You can take e minus e minus t as a common factor. So this becomes cosine t plus sine of t. So we found p of t, the p derivative of t. And now we are set to find our iteration. So the first iteration, t1 is equal to 2, 0, which is 0, minus p of t. So e to the minus 0, of course, 0, cosine of 0 divided by minus e basically of zero cosine of zero plus sine of zero and when you calculate this you will find this is basically is equal to two one then you will go for your t2 which is equal to t1 minus p at t1 divided by b derivative of t1 now my t1 is equal to one so T2 will equal to 1 minus your function is basically e to the minus of 1 cosine of 1 divided by the uh, derivative, which is equal to equal to this. So it is equal to minus e to the minus 1 cosine of 1 plus sine of 1. And this will give you 1.339. So this is how you find the roots using the gauss seidel and the neutral option. Now we know that the neutral option will converge much faster, which is will be around 1.5 something. The last question I will have in this review session is to use the neutral option method to solve this set of two nonlinear equations. And this is basically the initial guess. So now I need to write this in terms of f1 is equal to x squared plus 2y squared minus xy minus x minus 1. If 1 was in this side, meaning that this is equal to 1, we have to move it to this side. So all of this becomes equal to f1. And this is your f2, which is basically equal to 3x squared plus 2y squared plus xy minus 3y minus minus 2. Now, what will be the solution? Now, what we want to find? We want to find, use only one iteration. So, we need to find x1 and y1. Now, x, this is equal to x at 0 iteration and y at 0 iteration. And this is given to us as 0 and 0 minus the Jacobian matrix at the zero iteration, the inverse of that, times the f1 and f2 function, again calculated at the zero iteration. Okay? So this is how we will find our uh, equation. So the first thing I need to find, uh, or, or uh, we will find how to find our uh, updated solution. We need to find the Jacobian, okay? So the Jacobian is basically, it's a two by two matrix, the partial derivative of f1 with respect to x, the partial derivative of f1 with respect to y. Then the second row, the partial derivative of f2 with respect to x, the partial derivative of f2 with respect to, to y. Now let's calculate that. So the 
partial derivative of this with respect to uh, to x this is equal to 2x this will be 0 minus y minus 1 the partial derivative of f1 with respect to uh, to y so this would be 4y minus x this is the first row now we go to the second function the partial derivative of f2 with respect to x so this will be equal to 6x this will be 0 plus y and the rest will be 0 and then the partial derivative of this function with respect to y this will be 0 the first item this will become equal to 4y plus x minus 3. So this is your Jacobian matrix. Now you need basically to substitute. Now you need to find j at the zero iteration. So substitute the x and the y as zero and zero. So this is zero, zero, this becomes minus one, zero, zero, minus three. So that is your basically your Jacobian matrix. Now let's find our f1 and f2 so we need to find f1 zero iteration f2 at the zero iteration and if you go here substitute zero this becomes minus one and this becomes minus two so this is equal to minus one and minus two so now your function your variables x first iteration y first iteration equal to the initial conditions, initial uh, uh, guess, minus the Jacobian matrix, which is basically minus 1, 0, 0, minus 3, inverse. And then this multi multiplied minus 1, minus 2. Now you can do different ways. You can find the inverse of this, multiply it with this. This is one way. You can use Gauss elimination as well, which is the equations are basically are set for uh, Gauss elimination. So if you use it, if you use Gauss elimination to solve for this set of equation, it's pretty uh, clear. So we have here minus one, zero, zero, minus three, minus one, minus two. Okay, so here very straight, very straightforward. Row one will equal to minus R1. Just multiply by minus one. So basically we have one, zero, one so this is already set if you go for the second row row two will be equal to minus one over third multiply everything by minus one over third so this becomes equal to zero one and this is two over three so the equations are already ready okay now so i can use so this is basically your y and this is your uh, your x so basically uh, the values are straightforward the equations are straightforward now let's go back to this equation here. So I found all of this now. Okay, so this is, has been already calculated, which is one and two over three. Okay, there is no need even to substitute. The y is equal to two over the three, the x is equal to one, very straightforward. So now basically I will come here and substitute this. So your, sorry about that. So basically here your x one y one is equal to zero zero minus this is the solution will be one two over three so this will equal to minus one minus two over two over three. You can also find the inverse of the matrix, you will get also exactly uh, the same the same results.